When I say 3D sucks, I'm not talking about the three spatial dimensions that we live in. I'm actually a big fan of those. I think it's just the right number. Four would be too many and two wouldn't be enough. When I say 3D sucks, I'm talking about 3D experiences like uh, theme park rides that are 3D or 3D movies or virtual reality. And to be fair, I've always really enjoyed 3D stuff like that since being a kid, mainly for the novelty value of like, how is this thing floating in front of my face and I can't touch it with my hands? Also, I'm a geek, so I'm trying to think, how does this technology work? It's really interesting. But for that old technology from when I was young at least, you wouldn't want to be immersed in that experience for longer than about 10 minutes because it's really disorientating and nauseating and it's gonna give you a headache and all that sort of stuff. Modern 3D movies, on the other hand, you can happily sit through two hours of it. Most people can, some people don't like it at all. But the reason it's okay now isn't because we've fixed those issues with 3D technology. It's because directors of 3D movies have worked out how to work around the shortcomings of 3D technology. So there's certain things you can't do in a 3D movie which it would be nice if you could, but you just have to work around it. One of the shortcomings that I really wanna talk about in this video is the Vergence accommodation conflict. And I love this because it's to do with how our visual system works and, uh, and it gets into the technology of 3D. So when you fixate on an object in front of you, two things happen, I mean, at least two things happen, but the two things that we're interested in for this video, the first thing is you focus on that object. So you've got lenses in your eyes that are squished and stretched by muscles, which change the focal length of those lenses. And it means that you can focus on the thing that you're fixating on. The second thing that happens is that your eyes converge. So they swivel in your head. So if you're looking at a distant object, then your eyes are gonna be pointing almost straight forward, like parallel outwards from your eye sockets. If you're looking at something close up, like if you put your finger in front of your face, your eyes are gonna converge. You're gonna go cross-eyed essentially. But crucially, these two events aren't independent of each other. So when your eyes converge on an object, that's giving your brain information about how far away the object is. It's like your brain can calculate the distance to the object based on the angle of your eyes. And that information is then fed back to the lenses in your eyes, the things that control focal length. It's like your brain is saying, look, I know how far away this object is, so stretch on those lenses until you get the focal length right for that distance. And this is really efficient because it means that you can very quickly focus on roughly the right spot and then do some fine tuning once you get there. But what does this mean for 3D experiences? Well, if you go and see the Terminator ride at Universal Studios in the early 2000s like I did, then there's a point in the ride when the T-1000 reaches out from the screen and tries to touch your face. This is very common for 3D rides at theme parks and museums because it's a very quick, visceral, shocking experience to have something uh, come out at the screen. The problem is it sucks because if the 3D display is telling you that there's something right here in front of your face, your eyes are converging on that object and your brain is then telling the lenses in your eyes, focus on something that's that far away. Make that the focal length. The problem is this object that seems to be in front of your face is being produced by a screen that is still several meters away. The screen hasn't moved. So if you set the focal length to here, so anything here would be in focus, well, the screen is going to be out of focus, which means the virtual object will be out of focus. And if you've ever been to one of these rides, you'll have experienced this. You can converge on an object here, but you can't focus on it. And it's really unpleasant. Which is why if you go and see a modern 3D movie now, like if you go and see Moana or something like that, you won't have objects coming out of the screen because directors know that it's not fun and they shouldn't do it. But in a way that's a shame because there are certain situations where it would be good to have an object close to your face. Like in virtual reality, it'd be nice to be able to pick something up and take a close look at it, but you can't do it because of this virgence accommodation 
conflict. So how do you fix this? How can you do it? You need your display technology to more closely match reality. And it's all about light rays. So if you think about the light rays coming into your eyes from a distant object from far away, those light rays are going to come in uh, almost parallel. But if you have a, an object that's right up close to your eyes, the rays going into your eyes, they're more kind of fanned out. They're, they're less parallel or less close to being parallel, should I say. So all that information is lost with a traditional 3D display because the light rays are all coming from the same distance. You need a display that mimics the light rays of the real world. And these are called light field displays. And similarly, you get light field cameras that are used to capture this information. And there are a few different companies working on prototypes of light field displays right now. There's nothing commercial available. And I do want to explain light field displays, but I think it would make this video too long. I also think it deserves a video of its own right. It's really cool. Um, by the way, if you're a company that makes light field displays and you would like me to feature that as part of my explanation, then get in touch. But in the meantime, if you just want to get rid of 3D, like if you're not a fan of 3D movies, but you're forced to go to 3D movies because your friends enjoy them, then you can enjoy a 3D movie in glorious 2D with a special pair of glasses that are easy to make. I'm going to show you how to make them now. Alternatively, if you would rather have those instructions in book form, then pause the video now and buy this book, The Element in the Room, written by me and Helen Arney. We are Festival of the Spoken Nerd, along with Matt Parker. It's a comedy show about science. This book is the book version of the show, so it's a comedy book about science, and uh, it's lovely. I'm very proud of it. It's so shiny. Um, yeah, Christmas present. Why not? Links in the description. Anyway, what you do is you get a couple of pairs of 3D glasses from your movie theater of choice and you pull the right lens out of one pair and the left lens out of the other pair and you swap them around. So you now have one pair of glasses with two left lenses and one pair of glasses with two right lenses. Put either of those pairs of glasses on when you go to the movies and both eyes will receive the same image from the screen and it will be flat. While we're on the subject of 3D, I found a really nice puzzle that you might like. So imagine you've got a cube and the six faces of the cube have been colored in with these six colors here. You're also presented with three different views of the cube. So the cube has been rotated in different ways and presented to you. This is all the information you have. You're then presented with a net of the cube. A net is just when you unwrap a 3D object and lay it out flat. And then you're told that one of those faces is red. The puzzle is this, which of the other faces can't be orange? It's nice, isn't it? I'm not gonna give you the answer because although it looks tricky at first, like when I first saw it, I was thinking, ah, it's one of those ones where I'm gonna to have to like manipulate a 3D object in my mind's eye. There's actually a really nice shortcut and it's very satisfying when you get it. I don't wanna rob you of that. I found this puzzle on a website called brilliant.org. Working through puzzles and problems is absolutely the best way to learn, but it's also just really satisfying. I really like the way Brilliant have presented the puzzles and I like the way they've curated the sequence of puzzles as well because it really supports your progress. Like it's doable and by the end of a course you feel really smart, but also it's just really good fun. So check it out for free. Go to brilliant.org forward slash Steve Mould. If you use that URL, it really helps helps me out because they know that I sent you. But as an extra incentive, the first 200 people to click on that link, it's also in the description there, they'll get 20% off annual premium membership if they ever choose to upgrade. If you really want to know the solution to the puzzle right away, there's a second link in the description that will take you to the exact right chapter in the exact right course. Thank you to brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you next time.